British people were actually quite contained in their opinions. <laughs> I think I've heard an enthusiastic Latin American man go into hyperbole. Thank you very much. Very much appreciate it. Vice Chancellor. Dear class of 2019, I'm sure you will remember this day for many reasons. I'm sure you will remember it for this beautiful emotive ceremony. I'm sure you will remember it because you were surrounded by family, friends, professors who supported you. I'm sure you will remember it for however you're going to celebrate tonight. No questions asked. And I also hope that you will remember it for something else. I hope that you will remember that you graduated on the hottest year in UK history. I know that that sounds trivial perhaps, but it's not. Because we live on a constantly warming planet. You will remember that this day broke the record the next time the UK breaks the record. And the next time after that. Because those records will be broken again and again and again. That is not good news. I've been sitting here watching all of you come across the podium and I was asking myself, how many times do you remember telling your parents that they were born in a different world? You probably remember having said that once if I ask your parents, they will probably remember many more times than once. And many of the things that you said to your parents as you uh, have marched through your life and coming to this day, many of them were right and many of them were wrong. On this one, you are absolutely right. Your parents were definitely born in a different world. Footnote for the parents, because those graduating in these sciences know exactly what we're talking about. Footnote for the parents. Those of us who were born in the 50s or before, you know who you are, were born not only in a different world, we were born in a different geological era. Just digest that for a moment. We were born at the end of a geological era called the Holocene, which lasted for about 10,000 years and was an absolute miracle in the history of the planet and in human history because it brought together what scientists recognize as the sweet spot of conditions that allowed everything that we have today. We went from hunter-gatherers to sedentary agricultures and now to the human beings in cities and countries that we are. That was a miracle that lasted 10,000 years compared to the 4.5 billion years of the planet, a nick of time. Now, if you are born in the 60s or other, and I am safely assuming all graduates today are, you were born in a new geological era called the Anthropocene. And what characterizes that geological era is the capacity of human beings to determine their own future above the power of nature. That is an astonishing concept a new concept that we're not even understanding yet. Everything, I'm assuming, that you have studied about the Anthropocene, and I hope you have because otherwise your professors have not done a good job, 
Everything you have studied about the Anthropocene will tell you that it is an era of destruction. It will tell you that in the past 50 years, we have, we human beings, have actually led to the demise of millions of species, that we continue to bring them to extinction, that we have decimated the forest, that we have severely undercut the capacity of the oceans, of coral reefs, certainly that we have loaded the global atmosphere way beyond anything that is safe for us. We've done that basically in 50 years. Oh, good on us. Well, as we understand that that is the case, I would like to invite you to a different way of thinking about that. I would like to invite the class of 2019 to think about the fact that we're only just barely putting our toe into the Anthropocene. 50 years of a geological era is the twinkling of an eye. We have not done a good job to welcome that era at all. But that doesn't mean that we are condemned to continual destruction of nature and to human suffering beyond anything that we have possibly imagined. I would invite you to be aware of the fact that we humans, all of us, those born in the Holocene and you born in the Anthropocene, all of us alive today have a choice and a choice that we must make. And here's the choice. Do we want to see ourselves as victims of the conditions that we have today? If we do, I guarantee that those conditions will only grow. But is that a choice, a fair choice? The other choice that I'm inviting you to make is to see ourselves, yourself individually, and all of us collectively, not as victims, but as powerful actors. The story of the Anthropocene has not been written, and we are holding the pen more strongly than we have ever held the pen of human history. We can decide that we're going to rewrite everything that has been ascribed to the Anthropocene. We can decide that the Anthropocene is actually going to be the surprising replenishment and regeneration of nature. Because everything that you have studied at this outstanding university qualifies you to contribute to that global effort. But that is not enough. Everything that you have learned, which is encapsulated in the degrees that you're holding in your hand, is going to be necessary and not enough. We will also need your ingenuity. We will also need for you to think outside of everything that you have learned, to get out of that box and think very creatively, very disruptively about how else are we going to design human presence on this planet. And then the third component. What you have learned, your ingenuity that takes you belong, beyond what you have learned, and the third, your absolute determination. Because this is not going to be easy. This is not for the faint of heart. This is for those who really understand that we're frankly privileged human beings to be here on this planet at this moment in time with the capacity to write the history, not only of our own lives, but the history of the lives of at least seven generations to come. Never before have humans stood on this planet with that potential. So, graduates. There is some weight on your shoulders, definitely, but I invite you to assume that weight with what I like to call stubborn optimism. And why do I speak about that? First, because if when you started your academic endeavors at this university, if you had thought, I will never march across that podium and pick up my degree, I guarantee you would not have been here today. You started, 
and you have finished in a stellar way because you were optimistic about it, because you continued to say to yourself, this is difficult, particularly at four in the morning, but I am going to do it. And you kept on picking yourselves up and saying, next time, I'm going to do better, and I'm going to succeed, and yes, I'm going to graduate, I'm going to get my degree. There is a lot that is actually resting on that. That's the kind of optimism. That is an optimism that is an intelligent optimism. It's not naive. It is not the guarantee of success. When you entered here, you were not guaranteed of success. And we're now entering an era in which we also do not have the guarantee of success. But a guarantee of success cannot stop us. We're not guaranteed that we will be able to address climate change in a timely fashion, all of us together. But failure is unthinkable, and therefore, we must approach this challenge with the intelligent optimism that makes us motivated to contribute to the greatest global effort that ever was. That is optimism for me, but I also said stubborn optimism. Now, why do I call it stubborn optimism? First, because when I was three years old, my parents told me I was stubborn, and I have been stubborn ever since, 60 years later. But that's not the only reason. Stubborn is about not giving up. It's about being defiant. It's about realizing ahead of time that there are going to be challenges. This is going to be difficult. Yes, absolutely. That is not any reason to stop, because this is the greatest endeavor of humanity. So, did you know when you were going to graduate that you were going to have all of this upon you? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. But believe me when I say, no one has ever had as much opportunity as those of you graduating here today. My dear friends, I hope that you make the right choice on how you see yourselves in the Anthropocene and I hope that you will join me in the growing family of stubborn optimists worldwide. Thank you.